Welcome to New Possibilities. I speak truth to power without fear. Today I've read of quite a few stories and saw a few videos that dealt with former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani. He made some statements about the president. And I'm going to show you this brief news clip and then I'm going to provide my commentary on the other side. Nation, we love more perfect. The comment came as the White House slapped right back at Rudy Giuliani after the former New York City mayor questioned the president's love for his country. White House Press Secretary Josh Ernest suggested Giuliani had damaged his image as the man dubbed America's mayor after the attacks on 9-11. I can tell you that it's sad to see when somebody who's attained a certain level of public stature and even admiration um, tarnishes that legacy so thoroughly. Uh, and the truth is, I don't take any joy or vindication or satisfaction from that. I, I think really the only thing that, that I feel is I feel sorry for Rudy Giuliani today. Giuliani touched off a firestorm when he said earlier this week, I know this is a horrible thing to say, but I do not believe that the president loves America. He doesn't love you and he doesn't love me. He wasn't brought up the way you were brought up and I was brought up through love of this country. The ex-mayor hasn't apologized. I don't feel this love of America. I believe his initial approach is to criticize this country and then afterwards to say a few nice things about us. Giuliani defended the remark to CNN, saying it has nothing to do with race, adding the president was brought up, by the way, by a white mother and white grandparents. The kind of attack the president has heard before. This is not a man who sees America as you and I see America. Mr. Obama answered the charge repeatedly back in 2008. Let me be clear. I will let no one question my love of this country. See, Obama has faced more criticism and more scrutiny than any other president in my lifetime. His loyalty to this country is questioned over and over again. When he first ran for president, they questioned his loyalty. They questioned his love for America. In fact, they even question whether or not the brother is even a, an American. It got so bad that even after he was elected president, they demanded to see his birth certificate. They basically told him to show them his papers. And here he is, the most powerful politician in America. And he had to end up showing these people his papers. And they continue to question whether or not he is actually an American. And they've taken this whole um, birtherism to another level. Since they have... Uh, run out of using that talking point about the birth certificate. Now they question his love for this country. This man is constantly professing his love for this country. He is constantly talking about the greatness of this country. He is constantly talking about how only in America could his election be possible. He's constantly talking about the great aspects of this country, but that is not good enough for these people. He's constantly trying to display his patriotism and they don't accept it. They don't accept him. They don't like him, they despise him. He's gone out of his way. Today, he had all these flags out to prove his patriotism to these people. They're making the president tap dance, basically, to show his love for this country. But it's not good enough. It's not good enough because of the color of his skin. That's what it boils down to. That's why they question 
his patriotism. That's why they question his love for this country and his love for the people because of the color of his skin. That's what it boils down to. They don't like the idea of a black man in the White House. They never have and they never will. When I reflect on his presidency, I'm reminded of the movie Birth of a Nation. In that movie, they depicted African Americans as savages. That movie was rooted in paranoia, hysteria, people afraid of the possibility of African Americans obtaining political power. In that film, they show African Americans in Congress acting like fools. With their feet kicked up on the table, eating and talking and laughing and joking, acting crazy. They depict people, African-American people as savages in that movie, Birth of a Nation. Sex crazed savages drooling at the mouth, foaming at the mouth over white women. And that is the image that they have today. So when they see that black man in the White House, that's the image that they have in mind. They see somebody that can't, they think that he can't govern just by the color of his skin. They hate to see that black man in a position of authority and power. They hate it. They hate when that black man tells them the truth about this country. See, they're used to white faces in high places and they can't stand to see this brother in that White House. They're used to seeing white people in that White House. They're, using, uh, they're used to seeing people in power who glorify and romanticize American life and the history of this country. They're used to people who gloss over America's ugliness and pretend that everything has always been wonderful and will continue to be wonderful in America. They ignore the history of racism in this country they ignore the history of slavery and Jim Crow in this country. And they hate when this president exposes that history and doesn't gloss over it, but acknowledges it. They view truth and honesty as hatred. A true friend will let you know when you're wrong. A true friend will tell you about your errors. And that's what President Obama does when he talks about the mistakes that this country has made. When he talks about the, the history of this country. He's just speaking the truth. We can't pretend like slavery didn't exist. We can't pretend like Jim Crow didn't happen. We can't pretend like this is some post-racial society. When people speak the truth about America, we can't condemn them and say that they don't love this country. President Obama loves this country. What more must he do to satisfy these people? No other president has been subjected to this kind of treatment. No other president has been called a liar during the State of the Union address. No other president has had a governor wave her finger in his eye like he's a child. No other president has suffered this kind of indignity and disrespect. See, when they disrespect Obama, they disrespect all black people. That's what people don't seem to understand. They question this brother because he's black. That's what it boils down to. They question his commitment to this country because he had the audacity to say 
that Islam is not the enemy of America, basically, and that terrorism is the enemy. That's just a fact. That's the truth. And the only reason why they're attacking Obama over this issue is primarily because of his race, because he's an African-American with a Muslim name. That's why they attack him. They assume that he's some kind of undercover Muslim or uh, socialist or terrorist and all that kind of stuff. They have a, a sick para, uh, paranoia, a sick kind of hysteria. Because, I mean, President Obama is saying essentially the same thing that George Bush said. George Bush made similar statements, but nobody questioned George Bush's patriotism when George Bush said that this country is not at war with Islam. They didn't question Bush's love for this country when he said that. See, they want President Obama to paint all Muslims basically with a broad brush. They want him to basically play into the hands of the terrorists. Because when you play up this conflict as a conflict between the West and Islam, that feeds the propaganda machine of these terrorists.